is in that position, Emma. She can play anywhere across the back four. I think she is certainly growing in confidence in an England shirt. I think what you will get with her in the left back position, 1v1 defensively, I think it will be a tremendous battle on this side of the pitch with Anyomi. And she's dealt with that so far with everything this season. I think going forward, she will look to go on. But with Hemp already taking the natural width, I think it's about her supporting behind the play. Here's Lucy Bronze, already looking down the line for Kirby. Here's Magul. That's the operator in the centre of midfield for Germany, trying to release the pass to Schürrle. Some good ball players in there, Germany, but England looking to drive forward with Williamson. Hemp looking to get round Raul, who got back to get the block in. It's a great start for England. You can see the intent already. Get the ball out wide to Hemp. I think it's one of the reasons why Raoul is starting to have the pace to match Hemp. White wanted that ball to drop to her. This is Anyomi. Good pressure in there from Carter. Too much in the end. Free kick to Germany. Of all four teams in this Arnold Clark Cup, Germany are the team that have the most intense press. Mago. Frooms playing that ball. And England with an early free kick here. A fixture that's been far from friendly for the England team over the years. It's certainly a fixture England have struggled with. And I think for them to progress for the next level, they've shown their defensive qualities in both the Canada and the Spain game. It's the final third, it's the last part. I think that they really have to put their attention into how they're going to create chances. So Greenwood with a set piece. He's an expert deliverer for balls from that sort of position sent in bright was up for it comes to kirby there is many bright that's simple back to bronze loose pass from bronze but germany will look to break quickly and anyomi setting off down that right hand side just couldn't take it in her stride the pass wasn't the best by her Ball inside Carter, first time ball from Raul, just evaded Schürrle, looking dangerous there, Germany. There's a great pace and tempo to this game, but as I mentioned before about that intense press, can't turn the ball over cheaply in those midfield areas because this is what Germany do so well. Look to get in behind with very, very few passes. Certainly feel with this official is going to interrupt the game quite a lot. Give in. No danger down that left hand side. The ball as well. Got good players all over the pitch, Germany, even with so many notable figures missing. Captain Alexandra Pop and Jennifer Marajan, the last four midfielder, both missing through injury. Then six players having to fall out through a mixture of Covid and illness just before the competition got underway. But yet, still a competitive side. Dare Brits racing out for that, isn't it? Ellie Roebuck getting that ball in her hands. She's got some competition if she wants that number one shirt back. I certainly think Mary Earps has provided that for her. I think it's been more than fair for Wiegmann to give all three goalkeepers a start. Bronze. Now Walsh. Bronze. Helping that out to Kirby and Bronze going on. That's always an avenue for England to attack. Kleinhern across though, who was quite a classy centre half. Well, if there's one area that this German team are not quite settled, it's that centre back pairing. But Kleinhern is extremely quick getting across to recover.
Here's Williamson. It goes to Greenwood. Now Greenwood again, pulling the strings for deep for England, looking for him. And Raul had to stretch the Bayern defender getting there in the end. Well, that's a pass I want to see more of from England. It's a fantastic pass from Greenwood. Just behind the fullback, allowing Hemp to get into the spaces a lot deeper. Here's Carter, Hemp. Stanway, Walsh, just about holding on to the ball. Good pressure from Germany, but Carter doing enough there, working themselves out of tight spaces there, England. Going to have to. The number of players Germany are putting around the ball, they're making it difficult for any England player to settle. Already getting quite high up the pitch, though. And England create with Germany deep. No foul. And Germany will look to break quickly, but Walsh got a foot in, and England could turn it to their advantage now. Walsh makes right back to keep that ball away from Manyomi. Stanway. Here, Walsh again. Billy Bright, fabulous goal against Canada. Certainly England's highlight of this competition so far. Time for Greenwood. Greenwood stepping into space. Carter already quite busy down that side route. Had to do a lot of defending already. Oh, absolutely, Carter's starting position is so much higher than it has been for previous left-backs. I think as a result of that, it allows Hemp to sit slightly inside. Debritz. But again, England winning that ball. Not allowing that Germany midfield to settle. Froome's back between the sticks, who saved a penalty in the last meeting between these two countries at Wembley. Gwyn inside to Magul. Big buying presence. Germany side. Debritz, PSG. It's with a return back to Germany. Dongus. Now the Germany just want to get position going here. They've been second best in that department, certainly in the game against Spain. Well, what, they, what they do have is, is the ability to build from their back. They can be very patient at times. They always tend to use their goalkeeper, so they come out in a back three. And you can see just inside Dongus and Darbritz as a double pivot acting to draw England's midfield out. And they're leaving four players high, which if they solve the press Germany, they're, they're on the back line. And they're on the front foot here. And already looking to stretch England, the ball trying to run bronze, but bronze dealt with that challenge on that occasion. Williamson, and now Bright. And it's calmly done from England, but spoke too soon because Bronx can't get it under control. Ball on the move, that'll be a corner. Well, credit to both teams, it's being played at a brilliant tempo. England struggling to get out, especially with the numbers that Germany are committing forward. Germany looking to test England from this early set piece. The corner kick, Clara ball out there to take it. I thought that Germany would go with short corners because in the previous games, England haven't been leaving players on the top of the box. It's a crowded six yard box. Could be a testing one for the goalkeeper, but Ross header, free header, straight a robot. Well, certainly good first delivery Raul first out all oh, Roebuck just getting that pass away but giving it straight to Germany Magul and held by Roebuck so quick fire chances for Germany so sloppy by England you know from previous games this is the area gonna have to work on their build up when they're facing quite an aggressive front pressing team there's one strength to Ellie Roebuck 
with her ability to build out for her team. Carter, watchful. There's Ellie Roebuck. That group of Manchester City players who were injured at the start of the season. Such a heavy Manchester City presence in this England side. It's Kleinhern. Kleinhern looking for the pass to Lago. Walsh wants it to Williamson. And Williamson has options left and right. And she sweeps that out towards him. Well, England getting bodies into the penalty area, but him to take on Rao and drives inside. Him. Carter. Digs a cross out with a weaker foot. Debris can't get hold of that. Walsh. Him. Carter again. I would really love to see in those 1v1 moments for him to go down the side. Well, what about that for a pass from Greenwood? And here's Stanway, it's opened up for England. Oh, just behind White. Here's Bronze. And Kirby's in there. And it just wouldn't work out for England on that occasion. But they come forward again. Walsh. Into Stanway, not quite. And Germany will look to break forward. No resting in this game. And Yomi. Schirler. Magul. Carter won't let her settle. Elusive player in that midfield, though, is Lena Magul. That's a lovely football player. She plays in between the lines. She's playing just in front of England's back four. Really causing a problem for Walsh and Williamson because Walsh in particular is focusing on Darbritz and that space in between Walsh and Greenwood is where McGall is causing problems. Well, a very, very interesting start to this match. There's Bright. Now Stanway. Just a bit of a blind pass backwards there, just about to rescue the situation with Williamson. Now Walsh, there's Williamson, into Stanway, a little talk in a space. Kirby, Kirby again, Ellen White scores! She doesn't mind a goal against Germany, that's for sure. Opening 15 minutes, England in front. Well, what a brilliant finish by Ellen White, but we have to talk about the build-up to that and the link-up play between Stanway and Fran Kirby. And this is why Stanway has been picked to play in the 10 position. She has to create from there, but the combination, lovely first touch, perfectly weighted into Kirby. Gets a little lucky, but that's the first touch she didn't have the other night. And that indecision and the weakness in this German side between their centre back and full back. Great start from England, brilliant tempo to the game. Goal 49 for England for Ellen White. The record goal scorer for the Lionesses adding to her tally. And we have an early goal in this game at all. Her cap just about getting the pass away, but England keeping the pressure on Germany here. Raul. Schurler, who's made good hold up play against Spain, couldn't get that one under control. Well, Germany certainly famous for their intense press, but England are doing a great job. Every square ball across the back line, England looking to jump it, regain possession. Seems a real confidence to the team. And certainly a lot more free-flowing going forward than we've seen in the first two games. So as it stands, England will be winning the competition due to the yellow cards. We don't want it to be decided on that, though, that's for sure. Martina Bostecklenburg, top player in her day. In her third year as Germany's coach. Kleinhern looking for Agnomi. 
independent, solid shape at the back. They know they will be tested. As they have been in all the games so far. But here's Kleinhern, and Kleinhern looking for Raul, and it goes Carter. She wasn't pulling out of that challenge, and Raul may have hurt herself in the process. Well, I think there's only one player that's going to come worse off from that. Jess Carter fully committed. And I think that's why she's playing tonight in this position with Anyomi in particular down this side, the pace of Rao. I think Carter's going to be in for a very busy evening. She picked up a knock herself, but Ella White, I think for so year after year, delivering for England. Well, it's a great first touch. And I think the way the ball fell was on. Look at the first touch. Just allows her hit it with the outside of her right foot. She's so prolific in that position. She needs that type of service. I don't think she's been given enough the past two games. I think that's one of the reasons, as I mentioned before, with Stanway playing in there. I thought in the last game, she really grew the longer the game went on. I think she's having a strong second half of the season for Manchester City. And I think she justifies her place in the team. Morale well, still off the pitch at the moment, so Germany a player down. But here's Debritz. A bit closed down by Williamson, giving her no time at all. Ball. Almost England problems at Wembley. Green. Battling with bronze. That will be a Germany corner, though. That's what Kirby's going to have to cope with, Gwyn, playing on that left-hand side. There's always been a wing-up, converted to full-back. It's the test that Bronze needs and wants. And Germany test England with this corner now. Whipped into the near post, and Yomi didn't quite get to that. Debritz. Langhorn. Gwyn. Out to Bull. Ball with pace to burn, sends it in towards Schurler. It's going to break, they've got an overload here. Felkamp! And will it drop? Raul oh, Magul! England scrambling away. Pretty fortunate there, you might say. Well, they did well, to be honest. It was good second phase play from Germany, but England had bodies in the central area. And we know so often Germany are never out of the game. Even if you're having a good spell, you better build up a good lead. Feldkamp. What I am noticing from Germany is how high they're pushing Rao on this right-hand side. And Jess is having to deal with Anyomi on her inside shoulder. Rao high and then at times the Brits in that area. She can deal with all three though, can't she? Absolutely. Here's Kirby. Now Walsh. This is Carter. Greenwood. Ball forward towards Frank Kirby. I don't think Frank Kirby's going to thank her for that sort of pass across. Yeah. <laughs> she gave her a look as well. <laughs> well, if it had a little more depth in it, it would have gone beyond into Lucy Bronze, and I think. Lucy Bronze, as she gets fitter and stronger in the build-up to the Euros, that certainly could work on that side of the pitch. Uh, disappointing or worrying sight here for England and, of course, Chelsea. But she's still slightly struggling from the earlier collision with Raul. I've got to be honest, when I saw it initially, I thought she was hurt. She won't want to leave this pitch, that's for sure. I can see sure. that. I think she got caught on her knee. I don't know if it was just the knee-to-knee -knee contact. Or well, she's hyperextended it. That's what it looked like to me initially. Let's see if Germany tests her down that side. Now Walsh, first time touch, looking for him. In behind Raul, and Raul, sleepy there. Here's him. Couldn't pull it back, Raul recovered well in the end. Well, Raul's having a difficult evening already with Hemp. And I think for Hemp to go to the next level when she's in these positions, the quality of her assists have 
to improve. And it will happen. She's young. But when she's in full flight, difficult to stop moving forward. Greenwood corner. Millie Bright is in there. It's played short, though. Back to Greenwood. To the edge of the box as well. England working it. Hemp going for goal. There's Greenwood once more. Stanway. Just losing out. And Yomi might have, a go, have to go alone here. And then bundled over in the end by Georgia Stanway. Another creative set piece from England. Alex Greenwood not only has a wonderful delivery, but very inventive. And this is broken past bronze to Green. And ball. And Bright across. Didn't get that one. Robot did just stretching to get that one. Well, busy for Ellie Robot, that's for sure. But once again, the pace of Ball in behind and Gavin, that link up is providing a lot of service into the box. So both sides showing they can be dangerous in an attacking sense. But right now, England with that one goal lead. Is bronze tries to play it into white, bit of a loose pass from bronze. Kleinhern, who was the player of the match in the meeting at Wembley, the end of 2019. Kleinhern still only 21. Here's Ball, who's also 21, full of talent and looking to link up now. Bright has the advantage there. Cover that one. Well, you can see how often Germany want to put the ball down on that side and can understand why Germany want to do that. Ball leads the Bundesliga in terms of expected assists. Julia Glynn, standout young player at the last World Cup. More attacking role. Helped up by Dongus. We will try and work the ball out now. Hemp getting to that ball first. We work for Walsh. And Hemp, and she sees a gap, she runs into it. Out to Carter. Good control from Carter. Just losing the impetus there. Yeah, but it's great to see her bombing on because it gives Lauren Hemp an outlet, especially in the counter. You see with Kira Wall, she knows the strength and quality of Lauren Hemp and just puts the ball into space. Still not moving freely, Jess Carter. Now White. Getting there ahead of Kleinhern. Bronze, first time ball in. Beautiful, beautiful from Stanway for a split second. Well, that might cause Frims a problem. Well, you have to credit the run of Ellen White in the first instance. It's a lovely pullback to Lucy Bronze. And initially, I thought Stan Wave is going to set to Fran Kirby to look for the spectacular finish. Germany trying to work their way out here. England making it difficult. Strong challenge in there from Greenwood. A bit too much on the challenge now. Greenwood coming quickly to her feet. But. Uh, Nicar Caldera, the referee, who was the referee in charge of Canada's win over Germany at Norwich. Now Anyomi, she get there first? No, because Bright's across. Nicely done by Bright. Hemp couldn't get nearer there and wins the free kick. There's a little nibble on Hemp as she's trying to run away from the ball. She's going to pick up a lot of grazes on the ankles, that's for sure. She does this so well in tight situations, gets out of pressure. You see she gets caught on the top of her boot. Well, there's one player I think Germany are really missing tonight, and that's Lena Oberdorf, who I think will start for them as centre-back. I feel like they haven't quite got their central pairing just yet. And I think for that reason, it's why I don't think they will win the tournament this summer, even though I think they'll be in and around it. Well, it might be the case that England will face Germany in the quarter-final. Those two groups are paired up. This is bronze. Into Stanway, tried 
the ambitious ball actually towards White. He was there. There's Gvin. Congress. Felkamp. Talked about the centre back pairing for Germany. Of course, Marina Hegering is missing for them as well, who would usually start at centre back. You also mentioned Oberdorf, who impressed in the first game against Spain. I think it will be them too if they're fit. And I think it's an opportunity to exploit that. England looked too strong down the middle. I think so far from Germany, you can see both flanks very good in 1v1 areas, but Schuller hasn't had a lot to feed on just yet. Vicious build out play from the back from England, but Carter trying to hold off Anyomi. Carter battling to keep hold of the ball as well, but here is Anyomi. Feed Dongus there. Greenwood clears. Kleiner. There's Rao. Might have the pitch once more. Dongus. Magul. Tidy feet. No way past Carter the first time, but managed to get that cross in at the second attempt. Hemp. Even slightly pinned in here. Hemp finds White. And that's good hold up play from Ellen White. Walsh will spread the play. Now, deep White execute that one to perfection. They had the overload on that side, England. That's a poor pass for a player of her talent. The pass was to bronze. Just overhit it. There's a real battle down this left hand side for England. Jess Carter and Yobi. Well, so far, England leading by a goal to nil, scored by Ellen White, of course. 49th goal for England. Moving a level with Sir Bobby Charlton in that regard in scoring for England. Or moving past. Harry Kane and Gary Lineker. I think she looks really sharp tonight, making a lot of good runs in behind. But she's in a position every time England need to play out, she's hold, holding the ball up well. And one in two in an England shirt. Fantastic ratio. She said one of those players who just, when she wears an England shirt, she seems very, very much at home. I'll give any more for her club. Here's Gavin. Well, other than the first five minutes, Germany really struggled to break down England's press. They've had to go longer. I argue they've had that problem for most of the tournament, Germany. Well, every time I look inside the pitch, you've got one player in there. And well, there's an overload on the left back for England. There's only one player inside for the back four to hit, and that single pivot, I think, is making it easier for England. I think for Germany to progress, Dubritz has to come a little bit lower. Kirby collecting that for bronze. Fine bronze, but bronze battling hard to keep the move going. And England are working really hard in this game, even when they have a loose pass. They seem to be fighting quickly to win that ball back. Stanway. England on the attack again. Don't think this part is going to be able to continue for too much longer. Greenwood. Hemp. Magul. And Yomi. Oh, lovely drag. I think they're really hunting Germany down, not giving them any time. Kleinhorn felt she was caught by Whites, but they're not letting Germany settle at all. Oh, it's brilliant by England. Germany do not like it. England aggressive in their defending in their 4 2 3 1 shape. And while they're allowing the centre-back pairing to make passes, the minute the ball comes into the wide spaces, they're aggressive. Israel, collision with Carter. Looks like Carter ultimately is going to come off, maybe just a proportion as well. 
bronze. Magul, nice control. Magul, bringing that ball close to her. And Raul with a bit of time and space. And straight to the goalkeeper, disappointing finish in the end. But well, Good, patient play from Germany. And Magul, this is where her strengths are. Coming across just outside the box. Good play. But still comfortable for Roebuck. Well, England have two players down at the moment. Uh, Bronze getting to her feet, but it looks as though Jess Carter can't continue. And if there is any doubt, I'm sure you'd want her off, Emma. Listen, I, I love them to play for their country. I just want it to be OK. That was a heavy challenge. Can you see how the two knees connected? And I don't know whether the issue is with her knee. But well, she's tough, I'll tell you that much. She doesn't sit down. <laughs> so she's clearly took a knock. And Rachel Daly. It's like she is about to come on. So disappointment for Jess Carter, but she will have plenty more England appearances. No question. She's been excellent for 32 minutes. You certainly provided width for England going forward and defensively she's shown her qualities. I think her manager would have seen enough. So Rachel Daly, a dependable figure for England in a multitude of positions. Sort of feel like she could play anywhere in this England team. Do you know what? Brilliant player to have in your group. Can play in so many positions. I think she's done a good job. She's grown into being a a fullback for England, quite attack minded, but I think she's got better positionally as a fullback. Popular member of the group as well. Bronze. Shrugs off Bull there, who ends up conceding the free kick. Clara Bull. This is Greenwood. Now Bright, Williamson, Kirby, couldn't find Walsh there, so picked up by Dare Brits, who's so good at releasing those sort of passes, and Ball, driving forward, Ball, find forward play, but just eased off it, well enough in the end by Millie Bright. Oh, that's just great defending from Millie Bright. I think this will be one of the challenges for England going forward, that every time Lucy Bronze is caught high in the pitch, the transitions, and then players looking to get down the sides here of England's centre-backs. But Bright does so well. I think she's been tremendous in these three games. It must be remembered that Clara Ball was a real thorn in England's side in that last meeting at Wembley, and she scored the winning goal in that game here's walsh finding white stanway kirby bronze kirby good link up play in towards white just too far in front and then just gonna have a word with ellen white here catching throughs again good link up one thing i've noticed about england tonight so much more positive making a forward pass Bronze to Kirby to White. Quality not good enough from Kirby. The intention is. Raul. Right. Right, so there's the pressure again. Javier Dongas. Not with the loose pass. Uh, somebody who's really getting into the Germany team relatively late in her career. 27 years of age, just her third cap. Player from Hoffenheim. I think, again, that's an area that Germany have been experimenting with, with no Leopolds. And Dalman not considered to be in this 11. It's an area they need to get right to. 
Walsh, one of England's new look midfield. Kirby just ran away from her there. Just scooping that out of play is Debritz. Debritz. Vin. Now Debritz again, Magul. Long ball forward. Greenwood. Now him. And Yomi. She can't get the ball off her. Daly. Now him. So quick to the ball. And there's a little time for Kleinhern, who runs away quickly. I think Brown will be looking for the half time whistle because she comes inside Kleinhern. Rao out of position again, and Hemp doing what she does best, driving inside of the pitch. In such a solid 37 minutes from England, I think they've been good all over the pitch. And certainly seeing the partnerships inside Walsh, Williamson, Stanway starting to blossom. I think they've been aggressive out of possession and positive in it. The two Manchester City players over the ball for England. And another offering the short option. And it is played short to Walsh. Clips it in towards Bright and it just drifts away in the end. So not to be for England on that occasion. Well, England looking at shorter routines. Heavy central zone looking for Millie on the back. Just over here. And Yomi. Williamson. Which is bronze. Bronze trying to surge past ball and holds her off. Can't beat this, the next player. Here is Clara Ball. And she can shift as well. And she's doing just that. And look at this from Schürrle. And that's a free kick. Fine forward play from Germany. And a good position here. Oh, that's great counter-attacking play. And Ball looked beaten originally by Bronze. And this great counter, a great first touch from Schürrle. And a booking for Alex Greenwood. No complaints, really. It's just getting that balance right for England when they've got bronze going forward. I can see Williamson sitting behind the play. They have to think about how they feel that space that bronze has departed, because that's where teams counter down that side. Well, two of Germany's more experienced midfielders, Lena Muggle and Sarah Debritz over this set piece, the left foot, right foot option. But it's Magul! Oh! Stunning, stunning free kick from a classy midfielder, Lena Magul, with a touch of top draw quality from the set piece. No chance for Robot there. And Germany level. Oh, what a finish. A magician of a player. Lifts it up, but got great pace on it. Hits the underside of the bar. Roebuck can't do anything about that. But it's about the lead up to that, and it wasn't the first time in the first half. England turning over the ball down their right-hand side and Germany countering through ball. And Schuller certainly showing her qualities to get the free kick. So Germany level things up. With the display of the sort of talent that they have on the pitch despite all the absentees Nina Magul would certainly certainly be in the mix to be starting in their midfield from the Euros even with everybody fit Walsh 
Out to him. Still him. Need some help here, though. And Dabritz just eased off the ball. She can't believe she wasn't... <laughs> didn't pick up the free kick. Instead, England picked one up. Really competitive game, this one. Every time Hemp gets the ball, she's got two, three, four players looking to swarm her, which is why I'd love to see her go down the line a little more often instead of coming into the bodies. That variety, she's got to add it to her game. There's no denying her talent and her dribbling ability when she comes inside and can get into the box to create havoc. But I think we have to think about the service the team provides to Ellen White too. Well, the Spain side watching on, and they'll have been pleased with that equaliser for Germany because as it stands, they would be li lifting the Arnold Clark Cup. Greenwood sends in the free kick, Bright attacking it. Bronze trying to get there, that will be a goal kick. But yes, Spain beating Canada earlier on. Well, it's been a br brilliant tournament in terms of preparation for the Euros. I thought Spain were much better today, much more like themselves. Think how tight all the games have been. Even though Canada and Spain have won games, they've only won them by a goal to nil. Here's Kirby. Now Williamson, Walsh, it's Daly, Williamson. Walsh once more, moving that on to Bright. That just runs away, couldn't find a Chelsea teammate. But that Germany goal, and just a reminder again, just like the game against Canada, the quality of the opposition, they will punish you if they get the opportunity. Well, they just showed their qualities on the counter-attack. And yes, Lena McGall is one of the best midfielders in the world. Just lifts it up and beyond robot. Her 18th goal for Germany. From midfield, no less. White, she work it back inside, that's where the help is. Here's Walsh, and Bull. Walsh on them. Here's Bright. Now Walsh. Emma, I'm sure we'll get a chance to talk about what led to that free kick. Again, at some point, because that will be the concern for Serena Vigman or something to work on. Look, the strength of England down that side is Lucy Bronze going forward. So you're going to give something up, but it's about your structure behind the ball to make sure that in the turnover, you're prepared for it. And I think Williamson just got caught in one moment, and that was the difference. Bronze tried to help it on to Kirby. Back it goes. White won't give up on that. Frims away. And Bright going over the top to win that ball, and Yomi didn't move if what happens for center backs that sort of situation well, this is probably the last few minutes or at least since the goal was the first moment i feel like england have lacked the control they possessed in the first 35 minutes of the game germany getting themselves back on level terms pushing to take the lead for the first time for sherlock now and yomi Across there is Bright. Just a couple of minutes till half time. Bronze losing the ball there. This is Stanway. She was fouled. And Emma, how would you sum up this first half? I thought it was really good for 35 minutes. I thought England looked fresh, aggressive, very determined. I think to be more positive in the attacking play, deserving of the 1 0 lead, and I think a moment has cost him a goal. Daly. 
gets that from Greenwood. Get the punches. We preferred on that side, but in the space all the same. But this is what top level football is. You know, while I think this is a relatively young German team, they've got so much pace going forward that they will create chances. And I I think once you see at half time the quality of Schuller's feet in the lead up to that free kick, it's exceptional play from her. Germany had managed just eight shots on target in their two matches before this. Probably looked like more goal threatening in this game than they have in the previous two games. Swarming themselves into this one. Half-time at Molyneux, and a goal apiece between these two sides. Ellen White's goal number 49 of her England career gave England the lead, but Germany equalised through the classy midfielder Lena McGall, a fabulous free kick from her. And that goal meant that things are level at the break. Martina Vos Tecklenburg will be pleased that her side are back in the game. Still plenty to play for in the Arnold Clark Cup. Half time at Molyneux, it's England one, Germany one. Welcome back to Molyneux. This is as it stands at the moment. England, Germany, one goal each, half time. It's all level. And if it stays like this, the table stays like that too. And Spain walk away the first Arnold Clark Cup victors. So England, with one goal, could have been more, Ian, right? Yeah, and should have been. Um, it's a fantastic chance. At a time of the game when we were really on top, doing very well, you look at just Stanway here, fantastic run, brilliant ball from Alex Greenwood. Ball. And she has to put this in. I kind of understand what she's waiting for um, to put that in. That is perfect for Ellen White to, to tap in. She doesn't do it. And she's made a couple of decisions in this game, Georgia Stanway, where I'm saying she's got to be quicker with what she's doing. She's got to be a little bit quicker with what she's doing. Ellen White has been brilliant in the way she's run the channels, held the ball up, she deserved her goal, she's done fantastic. Yeah, Georgia's getting in some great positions, but it's just that final bit, you know, it's that final pass, you know, keeping the ball, linking it with play, but what I like about those two clips as well, it's the direct play, getting into those areas and then creating from there. Okay, here we go. Second half is about to kick off. Let's see what we can get in this one. Is it going to be as exciting as the first job commentary team? Emma Hayes and Seb Hutchinson. Well, England have never drawn three consecutive matches in their entire international history. But that is the situation we're in at the moment after their first two draws in the Arnold Clark Cup. They're drawing this one. But will that be the situation by the end of it? A frantic first half, really watchable first half. And one that could go either way as well as Germany send it into the penalty area. Bronze with a header. No changes from either side, and England look to break. Is Kirby? Well, it'll be interesting to see what Germany do differently this half. Successful in the counter attack, successful with their intensive press, but in terms of their build up and breaking England down. Certainly got to be more involvement from Darbritz and McGull. Is Daly. Hemp. Again, first thought in her mind every single time is to run with the ball and drive forward at the defender. Williamson urged to shoot. Here's bronze. And Bronze stretching for that one. Jeremy certainly looking to not give Bronze any time on the ball and looking to exploit that space behind her as well. Gvin, now that's a loose pass to Stanway, but uh, the referee blowing a whistle. Good pressure again from England, good start. Aggressive, making it difficult for Merla Frooms to play out comfortably. Not much change in terms of Germany's setup. Still looking to overload the fullbacks. I think they really have to get McGull into the game a little bit more. Here's Felker. Switching that one across to Rao. 
Chris Daly. And Hint didn't have that much time. But Germany have made a change. Euler Brand is on for the second half. Well, Germany got so much talent in wide areas. Brand is probably one of the youngest, brightest prospects across Europe in wide areas. Sanyomi making way for Germany. Euler Brand, a teenage talent, is on again. Has already been eye catching in this tournament so far. She's the second most found player in the Bundesliga. So watch her when she picks the ball up. Starts driving in certain areas. Really difficult to get off the ball. Switch going across. Walsh. Here's Greenwood. Walsh again. Spraying that pass out. Will it stay in play? Not quite. Just running away for Hemp in the end. Well, such a shame. I think Walsh has had a really good game today. She's got on the ball. I think she's been positive. She's faced forward more. Well, Farrell Williams watching on. Who scored the winner in England's only ever victory against Germany. Third place match of the 2015 World Cup. And still... This looks like it's going to be the only victory as England press forward here though with bronze. Kirby trying to get round Feldkamp. There's Dongus. It's Feldkamp again. Looking for ball. Germany have won all seven of their visits to English soil. Dominant when they travelled away. An average of three goals a game. And fixtures. It's to be remembered. Germany were ahead of the game. International level. No sight in Europe. So long. The leaders in that department of the continent. Only the USA can rival them in that regard. On a world level. It's Feldkamp. Ball. The goal. Somehow got a foot to that. And Dongus. It's just going to run away, but some touches in there from Magul. Classy display from her so far. Yeah, she's coming into the game a little bit more. She's looking to start in high positions, then drop a little lower to get on the ball. Create a problem around Kira Walsh. But the game isn't being played with the same intensity it was in the first half. So England trying to build up the atmosphere in well, a new stadium again, but Dare Brits forced the issue down that side. With Brand on the pitch down that side for Germany. A real weapon for England to contend with. A goal. Now Ralph. Brand. Oh, they're working it very well, Germany, but an air shot in the end. Miss kick, and England opened up there. And certainly a lot more passive from England the start of this second half. It's good play down that right-hand side for Germany. Here's Gavin. Dear Brits, Gavin again. Three members of their squad in the 2019 World Cup. Kleinhern, a near addition. Feldkamp, Magul, drifting out to their right-hand side, hanging the cross in plenty forward. But too much on the cross from Lena Magul. Well, Magul's drifting all over the pitch. You can see by bringing Brand into the game, sometimes they narrow off their wide players so that they can get a central midfielder on the outside with a high fullback. Those variations, I think, have been very clear. England slow to settle in this second half. Germany making that one change. From 
Vin. Bronze caught on the ball. Here is ball, but he break there. You see Bronze. Side relief, really. Tricky evening for her so far. I think she was fortunate, but it doesn't matter whether it's the left or the right back for England. Germany are targeting McGull down the sides to be the extra player. Greenwood aiming that towards Kirby. Unfortunate, really, for it to fall to them, but Williamson looking to spread it out towards him. And we're all a bit slow getting to that one. Here is him. On the front foot, though, Walsh looking for the run of him. Strong run. And him driving, direct. Looking to be effective, but it will be a corner. Klein Hearn across. Honestly, there's not many players in world football that can do that with that ability. As I've said before, the next step for her is even better execution. Goes around Raoul. Kleinhorn comes across. I'm just looking at her here and wondering when is she going to get her head up? Putting balls into areas, but not looking. So England benefiting from a burst from Hemp there. And they have a corner. And they played it short and low there. That's easily read by Raoul. Disappointing in the end from Stanway. Apologises. Especially how good the deliveries have been for England under Wiegmann. It's a waste. They're looking to pose Germany some problems in this second half. Hemp. Now Walsh. Williamson. Losing it. And fairly. Germany. Explode forward, but bronze battling back. Got the better of ball that time. And here's Williamson. Well, much better from bronze. Recovering that back press was really good. Sweeping ball from Walsh out to Hemp. This is where he could like to be. Hemp flies past the fullback, plays it into White. And well defended by Feldkamp in the end. They're looking to get their intensity back here. Walsh. Now Williamson. She helps it out to Hemp again. And they know the outlet that Lauren Hemp is. Williamson into bronze. Caught on the ball, though. It's Kirby. Another well, feature of Walsh Williamson's game this half has been spray it out to Hemp. Dongus, heavy touch. Stanway, passing around her. Bronze, good pass into Walsh. Brand closing down. But too tight there. I thought initially as the ball came across to. Walsh, could she sweep and wrap it round? First time out to Hemp. Eula Brandt had an excellent evening against Arsenal. The last group game of the Champions League when Hoffenheim, Hoffenheim came so close to knocking the Gunners out of the competition in a group that contained Barcelona. Lucy Bronze was just down briefly there for England, back to her feet. Was that a ploy? Here is Brom surging, and it just wouldn't break for in the end. McGull sticking tight, but Lucy Bronze just working her way back to full fitness. She admitted that even before this game. It takes the time. She was out for quite some time, but she's so good at this in the final third. The quality of her crosses and it is what Ellen White will need. Schirler. Well, over 13,000 in attendance at Molyneux. Another solid turnout to reflect the solid turnout at Norwich as well. Over 14,000 at Carrow Road. This one closing in on the 14,000 mark in the Black Country. And a 
game well poised as so many of these Arnold Clark Cup fixtures have been. I think what I've seen with today's games, both games, a little bit more attacking intent from both teams. If you look at the players that have stood out so far across the tournament, you could argue it's been defenders. But tonight we've seen much more attacking qualities from both sides. Germany can't win the competition. By virtue of the fact that Spain undefeated and with a win under their belt. Germany losing to Canada, so that put pay to their situation. Hemp, Sharp, gliding, pass challenges. Hemp just caught in two minds there, wanted to shoot. Stanway. Gasp from the crowd there when they realised Hemp just slowed things up a little bit after some beautiful dribbling. This is Walsh. Debritz not letting her settle. And Bright, Schurler, and free kick, but Hemp showing both sides to her game there, really. That's where I think she wants to be, running down this central corridor. What she doesn't do enough for me is pick her head up. There's a fantastic run outside her from Rachel Daly. Just got to get that release right if she's not going to shoot early. Greenwood helping it out to Hemp. Little tuck there for Brand. A loose challenge, really. Sometimes it's the only way to bring Hemp down. Well, she's been on the ball a lot this second half for England. And as we know, she is a critical player. Second in the league for successful crosses. And Germany getting everybody back behind the ball for this free kick. Stanway and Greenwood over it. Helped in by Stanway. It's going to drop to Bronze, who lined it up. Got a lot behind that. I think he was going off target, hit Kleinhern. But this is broken. Hemp flags up. Flags up. No VAR. We know when the flag goes up, play will be stopped for sure. Oh, great play from Georgia Stanway. On the edge of the box. Looked like there was going to be a break from Germany. Stanway did her job. Germany cleared their lines, left. England bodies behind them. Well, England are about to bring on Nikita Paris. I understand it may be for Stanway, which would suggest Kirby in the middle. Kirby down the line to White. And that'll be a Germany throw, so this might give England the opportunity to make the change. Well, no, Germany take the throwing quickly. I think it was about to happen, but I think the Germans are going to be playing to England's time scale. And here comes that change. The so Stanway off for Nikita Paris, which screams really that Frank Kirby will shift into the middle. It also looks like Paris and Hemp are swapping wings. Well, Hemp coming across to the right-hand side, I should say. Well, that's unusual. But the left-footed player on that right-hand side, it does bring a different dynamic. Oh, and Hemp sliding in, and both players may have a problem here. But Hemp looks like she's come off the worse. And isn't it always the way, switching across to this side? Again, it doesn't look much in it. Ah, you can see she gets caught, kicked in the calf. We saw one. Well, Lauren Hemp, a talented young player, but Karen Carney, a legend really of England football. She knows she's on camera now. Was also a very talented young player. in the England side that lost in the European Championship final to Germany in 2009. I 
think that's an interesting move. And Hemp has no right foot. So everything she's going to be doing down this side is cutting in. And that means perhaps targeted balls to the back post. Paris quite good in the air. But it's still a strange decision. Belkamp. Germany have options to the right. And able to drive forward here, Raul. Didn't make the most of that opportunity. Will be a corner, though. The game's end to end this minute. First time Germany really come through the middle of the pitch. And Raul's been making that overlapping run all night. Good defending from Daly. This could be international football at its best. Two top teams, you don't know which way the game's going to go. Tight, intense element to it. There's a trophy on the line, certainly in England's case. Germany's corner, packed six-yard box. Green went for that, completely missed the ball. And then across comes Kleinhern, who doesn't get the decision. I said before, Germany have always beaten England when they've come away from home to play them. So in terms of the history books, a draw is a step, but they won't be happy with a draw in this game against a slightly understrict Germany side and the chance to win a trophy. Here's Gavin. Magul. Couldn't release ball, though. Here's Bronze. Gavin tries to get tight, not tight enough. Nikita Paris. And Paris on to Kirby, now in a central area for England. Daly looking for White. Oh, and Felkamp just got enough on that. And that's what you do get with Hemp, left-footed player playing across the pitch to Nikita Paris. Good build-up player, felt the release could have gone sooner. On both counts. Brand hasn't been able to really offer her attacking threat since she's come on. What I will say, if she gets into positions 1v1, watch the turn of pace she has to go beyond defenders. Yeah, it doesn't turn 20 until October. Talented young players, Germany, some of whom have played in this competition, some yet to play in this competition. Serena Cherchi, talented striker on the bench. But only that, they're missing. I mentioned all the big players they're missing, but one of them is Tobias Vasmut, the Wolfsburg striker, the top scorer in the Champions League this season. Another, you know, they're talented, Nina Lapine as well, the midfielder. How much short in goal, and they're, they're pretty well covered in the goalkeeping department, to say the least. As I mentioned, I think the area they are most undecided is at the back. I do think Oberdorf and Hegering will be the starting centre-back pairing in the Euros, if fit. Debris. Defending for a watch in the end, and the flag was up anyway. One thing England have done better in this second half is, is deal with ball and low spaces. Bronze hasn't been bursting forward the same volume that she did in the first half. And Kira Walsh, deep line frame maker for England, made in the last World Cup. It's a single pivot. Here's Phil Kent. Driving on. And Bronze went through the challenge there. White wanted to get England going. It's that sort of game at the moment. His ball. And there's Williamson. Oh, mix up with Bronze. Dongus. McGall. Just about keeps her feet. Still McGall. And then Devers. Well over, but it's 
it's that sort of game with the moment you feel like the run of the ball is going to be the difference and england turning the ball over far too much really sloppy play from england williamson and bronze getting in each other's way i think good delay defending by bright and england managed to get numbers around the ball and a poor strike by darbritz well i think it's been really quiet by her standards tonight Debris, another one of, well, an ex bind player. With so many current bind players in the team. Elaine Loyfonts, who's missing, the current Chelsea player, is another ex bind Munich player. They've become strong side in Germany after Wolfsburg's period of dominance. Expect a lot of changes from both sides very shortly. out to Daly inside to Walsh We're trying to stretch that pitch out all bright pass just about read by Gvin and England do win the free kick took a while I think the ref should have just carried on it's not like it's a massive advantage to bring it back The clip of the legs of him. Paris. Good play from Paris. Just a bit too much on the pass. Daly does well to keep it alive. Not well enough. It did just run out of play. I think the fact we got Kirby in that 10 position. Personally, I'd love to see Hemp down the left hand side and Paris on the right. Just to really exploit the space that Rao is leaving. In her attempt to go forward and join in play with Brand. England can exploit that. Just get the feeling that Serena Wigman is trying a few things here to see what works, what doesn't work, because the business fixtures are the ones in the summer. And you're right, she has to do that. Orn Walsh, Paris, the give and go. Nikita Paris, Kirby up in support. Still Paris, drives, goes down! Referee says the defender got the ball. I think Raul looks a little relieved. I thought initially it looked like a corner to me. It looked like Raul had won the ball, and I still stand by it. Look at the direction of it. Good play from Paris. Raul first to the ball. Clearly a corner. A smile from Raul is probably to suggest. No, I got that challenge spot on. Whipped in. Just wouldn't break for England in the penalty area there. Helped back in by Bronze. Trying to get it away. A goal. Kirby. Walsh. Just loses out. Now Sherlock can bring it away and moves it on to ball. And this is where Clara Ball likes to operate. Score from a similar position at Wembley, but not like that. Well, one thing's for sure it's where they are so dangerous. Ball is lightning quick in these situations. Good defending here by Rachel Daly. Delays really well, deflects into the wide spaces. Well, one of the contingent from Germany's third team at the moment, Hoffenheim. Chateau Hagel comes on, made a debut in this competition. And last time out against Canada. And Linda Dahlman, who's a lot more experienced midfielder, is also another of those coming on. And another of the Bayern Munich players. And Magulov after her excellent display. Oh, another quality player in Linda Dahlman coming in like for like so Germany playing the next few cars there England need to win they certainly need to solve their build-up going into the Euros struggled I think in all three games against the high press
Katrina of England urging her players on here. If England were to find another goal, they'd have more, they've scored more goals than Spain. Spain have two goals in the competition. And England have two goals in the competition at the moment, but need to win this game as a starter. And that equaliser, I must say, from Germany in the first half means that yellow cards is not going to be a determining factor to decide the winning winner of this tournament, which is a relief for all. Here's Greenwood. Looking for him, who's back out in familiar space on the left-hand side. Kirby. Well, to go there for Kirby, but she does play down the line to him, who always seems to have the legs on the defender. To just go out. Oh, he didn't have the legs on the touchline. I agreed. I think everybody prefers to see her on this side of the pitch. And I think in the last quarter, she will get a run on round. And I think it's important for Kirby in the position inside that she does provide forward service, passes into the box. I think she does very well. Right foot under a lot of pressure, forcing that ball straight out to play. And even though Germany do have this dominant record over England, their recent meetings have all been very close, very tight. They'll be losing the ball there. Down by trying to slip it through. In the right place was Greenwood. Just a relieving clearance away from Greenwood. mentioned before Germany cannot win the Arnold Clark Cup but if they were to beat England England would find themselves bottom of the table well worked wide here's Raul plenty forward here for Germany this is promising for them held back inside Bright can't get there Charlotte couldn't get the ball out from under her feet Oh, not for the first time, England struggled in this second half with that overload down that side of the pitch. Perfectly weighted pass to Dalman. And Shulak just cannot get it out of her feet. But credit again, Leah Williamson in that position. She broke up so much in this second half. Germany looking dangerous here, though. Harkle playing that ball forward there. Brits couldn't get it under control. Here's Paris. Nowhere to go there. They've got the pinned him at the moment. They can't play out England. They really have to work hard at how they're going to solve that. And I watched Germany look to do it. And they do it in a back three, and they're really, really wide. But they keep their left back low in order for the centre backs to take up maximum width. And because of that, England can't get a press on them. Belkamp. Forward by Kevin. Bronze. Frustrated there that. Kirby didn't come to the ball. It's Hemp. Now England can play their way out, and Walsh looking for Paris in behind. Good control from Paris. Now Bronze inside, Williamson. Walsh. And that's the pass to Hemp on the front foot. In it goes. Back to Hemp, though, again. It's broken nicely for her. Can she make the right pass? White, he didn't have worked it to Kirby, the block was in there. Good play all round from England and their best ball has been out to Hemp in the second half from Walshaw Williamson. Again, 1v1, good areas, slight cut back, good set play by Ellen White. And Fran doesn't get enough on it to lift it into the corner. Well, Frooms getting her hands on that ball. Hasn't had too much to do overall. Watch there by Greenwood. The ball just wouldn't quite break for Germany there. Williamson charging across. Now Paris making the run down the line. And the ball does stay in play. Now this has worked out well for Nikita Paris, but Vin across 
But Paris turns inside Gwyn, and that should be a booking for Gwyn really there. She stays down. Looks like it's just going to be a free kick for England. That's great determined play from the keeper, Paris, but what a pass from Leah Williamson. Again, quick to snuff danger in front of the back four and turns it into a counter-attack for England. And I think Paris can play an important role for, for England from the bench. Her biggest strengths over the years have been getting 1v1s down the sides. I think she's looked brighter this evening. They've been just caught on the Achilles, I think, in that particular incident, but seems OK for now. But Nikita Paris, the one-time top scorer in the WSL before Viv Miedemar appeared on the scene. And so, free kick here for England. Greenwood and Kirby over it, looking for a good delivery. Greenwood sends it in. Couldn't beat the first player in the penalty area. Kirby, oh, there's a late challenge in there for Brown. Yet, yeah. yellow cards. Challenge on Daly. Yeah, that right decision. I thought it broke up England's momentum in the second phases. But it looks like there's going to be some changes coming in for the last 12 minutes or so for England. Foot there from Brandt. This has been one competitive match. This two sides can't be separated. Cruz watching where this ball will be delivered. And free to the right for England. They're thinking about that short pass. Kirby clips it in. Bright's in there. Bright. Got a head to the ball and directed on target. I keep thinking about all the learnings for England. Showing, I think, variety in set pieces is a real positive for them. I think defensively, again, proving to be quite solid. I think it's both their build-up and the final third, for me, the two things that have to be worked at. Hemp. White shirts forward here for England. Kirby. Just over from Williamson. It broke nicely for her. It did. I think she's had an outstanding second half, really growing into the role inside. Falls well for her. Just gets underneath it. Yeah, Leo Williamson has scored a couple of goals for England. Have a close effort as well against Canada. England about to bring on two more players. Here's Nikita Paris. Bronze down the line for Williamson. Brandt. Within. Paris back there. Here's Bronze. Paris. a tough game to predict what's going to happen here. England want to make the changes quickly. And Ella White goes off to be replaced by Alessia Russo. And Lucy Bronze off as well. And Ella too. So the double Manchester United substitution made by England. And what you can see, well, that, are they going to go Back to a single pivot here, England. Who's the left back? If Rach Daly's coming over to the right, looks like England are really going for it, unless they're looking at playing a back three, which it looks like they are. So England hunting for the winning goal, and Millie Bright still forward in the penalty area. They're pushing here for a winner, England, to win the competition. Which is good to see him anyways. Oh, I love it. I think it's a great decision. You've got to try it in these situations. 
Now they've got to see him defending the counter as well. Absolutely, could be a really fascinating finish here. Ball, looking to win it late again for Germany. Ball, going across, Dermritz. And the way England have set up now, you feel like one of these sides is going to score in the closing stages. Dermritz, teasing cross, oh, just wide for Brand. Worked well, but she couldn't find the finish. Lovely feet from Darbritz down this left-hand side. Great close control, gets beyond two. And that cut-back cross, so difficult for the centre-backs. And Brand comes on the blind side. And it's just past the near post. England really attacking at the moment. Mini Bright has stayed up front for now. Just hope the cross is coming. The last to the cup time cup game that's loose from Nikita Paris this does present an opportunity for Germany here lots of space Dalman and here's room but to really cause problems so that's disappointing really in the end from Hagel well the strength of Germany has been down the side to the fact that England have taken their fullbacks out, I think will make for a fascinating end to the game. But this is good tournament preparation because this is what England might look like if they need a goal in the tournament. Kirby, Hemp. Now options everywhere for Lauren Hemp. But will she just go alone? Mini Bright! Will that be the winner for England? Still. Plenty of time to play, but Millie Bright, the makeshift striker. The move pays off for Serena Bigman, and England in the lead again. Oh, that's brilliant play from Lauren Hemp. A defender, well, striker, Millie Bright, I think winning it for England. Just a simple ball from Kirby to Hemp. And as we know, driving inside. It's just brilliant play from her here. No VAR ever. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness. Gone immediately into the back four. England for the last part. Tidy finish from Millie Bright. And it's safe to say Millie Bright's gone back to centre back. But England still have plenty of bodies forward. Here's Kirby. And Kirby twisting and turning. And with this scoreline, England will be the Arnold Clark Cup champions. On goal scored from Spain. Still feel. There's going to be more interesting moments in the closing stages of this game. Greenwood. And England really... For Spain, that goal made them look a little clumb because they know the title will be taken away from them. Jenny Hermoso there, her face says it all. It's been cheering on Germany here for the closing stages. I wonder how many times that's happened in football history. But it's exactly what England need going into the Euros, winning a mini tournament and give the group so much confidence. Well, Williamson. Oh, giving that loose ball away, Dalman couldn't collect it, Walsh, composure, turning and releasing as well, Kirby, England looking to finish with a flourish here, now Hemp, and Hemp, Kirby just ran out of room in the end, and now Germany will flood forward. Ball, needs a bit of help, all right shirts. Flooding back. Vin. Dare Brits. 
given away by Toon. Paul, it wouldn't break. Paul won't run for Germany at the moment, but it might do here. Raul battling with Kirby. Dalman. Kirby wins the free kick in the end. It's a relief for England, frustration for Germany in these closing stages. It took a while to get that ball out. But resilient in the end. Well, Selina Churchy, a 21-year-old forward who's really impressed for Potsdam in the Bundesliga, replaces ball. Couldn't find that winning moment for her today, but Churchy, another one. This young group of German talent coming through. Now that's helped on nicely by Russo. And Hemp is offside, which will give me the opportunity here, early Emma, to ask you who your player of the match is. I think there's only one, and the winner confirms that. It's Millie Bright, especially for scoring two goals for England in this tournament. Brilliant defensively and showing how prolific she is up front. Yep, shining bright again for the Lionesses. And on the score sheet again, the joint top scorer of the competition with Buteas is Russo. She'll be tasked to just hold it up the pitch now for England. She so ticked towards the 90th minute. And they've all just ran away from the Manchester United forward there. But really good from Serena Wiegmann at a time when her team needed to find something else. Made changes, went to a back three, gambled, and it paid off. Certainly has that luxury, can put Leah Williamson as the central player in that three to put Millie Bright up top. Play defensively and an attacking one as well for England. Is Russo. There's been other good performances in this game as well. well Greenwood caught by Churchy. I think all round, I think Greenwood alongside Billy Bright has had a really good tournament. I think Lucy Bronze grew in confidence. I think the midfield pairing, Walsh, Williamson, been outstanding. And let's not forget Lauren Hemp. Yeah, we, it feels like we say it every game, a star is born, but she's been doing it. Hasn't really got that many caps relatively, but somehow every single game she plays for England, she catches the eye. And that's helped on by Russo. And this is Kirby and Russo at Toon. Running back into traffic. And Walsh really keeping it down the right end from their perspective. Hemp. And she will run this into the corner. There's only three minutes being added on here, so two more minutes to play. And Hemp. It did look like it got out of play. Will be a goal kick to Germany. How do you sum up this game if you can? I think it's been end to end. I think it's been brilliant by both teams. England, England having the better of the first half. I think more even second half. Great resilience from England. Versatility, adaptability within the squad. They've been stung late against Germany before. Notably in the last game at Wembley. On occasion, scores were level and Germany won it in the 90th minute. But right now, just about a minute and a half away from defeating Germany for just the second time. And Martina Vos Tecklenburg still believing her side will have one more chance in this game. Well, they need to get the ball back. Daly, Russo. Forward by Hegel though. Churchy did very well. Schurler prompted onto Derbrinks. This might be the last chance for Germany. Debritz, and she fashioned the space, and Toon gets the foot in. It will be a Germany throw-in, though. 
And Tim have hurt herself just making that challenge. It's to dig deep now, though. And just hacked away by Toon. Not helping her. Injury she may have just picked up. Find her. Thirty seconds to go. Serena Vigman standing out in her technical area, hoping England can see off this attack from Germany. Cleared for by Daly, but there's no release. It'll have to come back forward. Germany have to go long there to avoid a second defeat here in the competition. Go forward, Bright's watching that one, good header as well. Hemp gets there first, and here goes Kirby. Room to run into as well. Will she go for the corner? Will go all the way herself. Frank Kirby, what a run! And what a finish as well! And that will finish things off. A rare win for England against Germany. And the clinching goal for the Arnold Clark Cup. Well, I hate to say it, but that's why she has to play as the number 10. Just straight through the heart of that Germany defence. And I think ever since she's gone into this position, as the game has opened up, England have improved. And I felt she'd been lacking a little bit in that part of her game in the first two games. So I'm so pleased for her that she continued on the run, kept driving, and lifted the ball over Frooms. No more than England deserve. Shown a great spirit. And Fran Kirby getting herself on the score sheet in this game. 15th goal for England. The winners of the first Arnold Clark Cup are its hosts. The Lionesses lead the table. Millie Bright with a winning goal. A rare winning goal for an England team against Germany. For just the second time in the Lionesses history, they beat the great footballing nation of Germany. But in this present team of Serena of England, they've also picked up a piece of minor silverware, but a piece of silverware all the same. A tournament with elite teams, and England have topped it. Unbeaten in their three games and ending with a victory as well. They will be able to lift a trophy in front of this crowd at Molyneux. Frank Kirby putting the icing on the cake in a performance that England will remember, certainly in the short term at least. The final score at Molyneux, England three, Germany one. Well, this was a test that the Lionesses needed. They'd come up against opposition and scored a number of goals under Serena Wiegmann. But these were the tests against some of the best teams in the world that we needed to really see where England stand. They finished top of the group. They've won the first Arnold Clark trophy. And that's right in front of this fan base, right here at Molyneux. What a great game. Loads of reaction still to come. Some stand-up performances as well. Frank Kirby there in front of your eyes, getting that final goal. Much deserved. A brilliant performance from the Lionesses. A hard-fought game against the old foe, Germany. Lots more still to come. Ellen White there as well. Some brilliant performances. We will go through all of those next. So stay with us right here on ITV for more reaction after England lift the first ever Arnold Clark Cup. Well, Ellen White opened the scoring in the first half and then it was Millie Bright, who was our centre-back, turned centre-forward with a second goal for England, making it 2-1, her second of tournament as well. And then Fran Kirby finishing the Germans off, making it 3-1 and crowning England the champions of the Arnold Clark Cup. What a performance from the Lionesses today.
just confirmation then this is how the table has finished up now if Germany had beat England today England actually would have finished bottom but it's Germany that finished bottom Spain finished second they were top of the table going into this match today with their win earlier on today and then Canada the Olympic champions finish third what a tournament to really pitch yourself against the best in the world England have finished top of the table Arnold Clark uh, ooh, Arnold Clark Cup champions <laughs> so two goals in the tournament player of the match today as well our center back turn striker back to her roots Millie Bright she is now speaking with Katie Shanahan Millie congratulations you won the Arnold Clark Cup how do you sum it all up yeah I think it's just brilliant obviously I think for us in the past it's been a rocky road and for us to finally be on a journey where you know we're all as one and we all know the, the outcome which is we want to win um, but I think for us we've kind of kept that quiet we've stuck to our game plan um, and just really proud of how far this squad has come and this is just the beginning so yeah obviously it wasn't pretty out there but again it's another dynamic to our game that you know when things aren't going right we can change things and we can do it the dirty way if you like and yeah get the job done so really proud your joint 12 goal scorer in the tournament with Ballon d'Or winner Alexis Puteas not bad for a centre back no I'll better take a bow for a <laughs> Well, what a moment for Serena Wiegmann. Not that long into the job, but already something to smile about. Topping a group with a talent 
of Spain, Canada and Germany. And Millie Bright, a standout display in this game. A standout display in the competition as a whole. And look at that, sharing the golden boot with Alexia Puteas. Two goals each. That's a nice moment for Millie Bright. And Emma, just talk us through her competition as a whole. Your player, of course, at Chelsea. I wonder if they're going to cut that boot in half. I mean, it's really odd to see two players hold the same trophy. I think what she's shown um, is leadership in this tournament. I've, I've seen Millie day in, day out, and I've noticed that throughout these three games, she's progressed so well and stepping up in the right moments. And that's why I gave her player of the match. And a breakthrough star in this tournament, Benia Del Castillo being recognised for her contribution, really. Didn't play as much game time as the other, but when she did play, she really caught the eye. Yeah, talent, for sure, playing down that left-hand side for Spain. I think that's something they would have learnt uh, going into the Euros. A real talent for them, much like Lauren Hemp is for us. I think that's an extra boot for uh, Bright. They can't cut it in half, as we said. So many children in attendance as well, enjoying the occasion. Maybe some potential England stars of the future, but the England stars of the present. A nice moment for them. As mentioned by Ian Wright, the She Believes Trophy was picked up by England in 2019. But some more medals to put round their neck. While the main one is in the summer, and then another big one next year, as far as the World Cup is concerned. Any time you win football matches and win competitions, it's worth putting a smile on the faces of these players and it buoys them for the rest of the season, no doubt. Yeah, it breeds winning. That's the important thing. Regardless, they've topped the group. They've beaten Germany for the second time in, what is that, 26 games. Players have been developed. Everybody's been given an opportunity. And I think they've come out of this learning a lot more about themselves that I think will prepare them well for the summer and I think everybody will I think what they've got to manage now is are they going to go in as tournament favorites talked about as tournament favorites they will have to live with that pressure and expectation but listen to what Millie Bright said earlier they've got the culture right in the group the spirits right the mentality's right there's no reason why we can't win it and how close is Serena Vingman to getting her strongest side and the squad you think she wants for the Euros. I think like Ian Wright said, they've got depth and they need depth. You know, Carter comes in at left back, has to leave the game, then Daly comes in, puts in a top performance. Williamson going into midfield alongside Walsh. You've got two in there that, while she hasn't had her best tournament here, I think she's such a huge prospect and will continue to add for England. Jill Scott, her experiences I thought really counted against Spain. I think the centre-back pairing, Greenwood and Bright, they're, they're growing with every game. A nice touch as well, each squad member passing on a medal to the next one. Players who are rivals at club level. And you can see their Chelsea to Manchester City to Manchester United and back to Manchester City. But smiles when they all play for the England team and together. And the captain, Mia Williamson, who will grab that trophy. And that's because England undefeated. And with the victory over Germany, Arnold Clark Cup champions. And they will hope it's a precursor for lifting the European Championship in the summer on home soil as well. They have a very good platform here with some of the best in world football they face.